Welcome to the ITSP Magazine Podcast Network, a modern, innovative multimedia platform, broadcasting ideas and connecting minds. Every company has a story to tell, from the small startup to the large enterprise, and everything in between. This is one of them. We hope you enjoy this brand story conversation. Marco. Sean. Vroom, vroom. There you go. It was your turn. <laughs> it was Shots my turn to, to start the engine. <laughs> I don't Shots know why we Vegas. started doing this, but at this point, we can't go back. Every time we start to talk about what's going on at Black Hat, we're going to do Vroom Vroom. And we better explain that so people don't think we're crazy. It's because well, we it's crazy. Chats, on, chats on the Road. That's how it was born to have the pre van conversations. And we were literally recording podcasts in the car together, driving huh. from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. That's why we do Vroom Vroom. Now we're going to fly right. because it's way too hot to do that. And there's not much to see on the way anyway. But anyway, you can only see X, X, Y, Z, Z road so many times. And I know, it's I know. No longer and, so, and so many stones and desert area. And uh, for some people that do it the first time, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. But once they're done it a few times, it's OK to fly. But once you get there at Black Cat, then there is a lot of people to see. There is a lot of company there and of course there is las vegas too but that's not why we're going there and uh i am glad to see someone that uh we were joking we we literally see at every conference so <laughs> <laughs> drawers good so good to see you good to see you guys as always yeah always a pleasure my friend and i i really i i see the uh i see the image on linkedin primarily where i spend a lot of time of us talking in in your booth and the the color of that and you you just look amazing i'm i'm excited to uh have that experience again in las vegas and uh th this chat is to kind of catch up and and hear about what's going on ahead of vegas so folks know what to uh what to expect when they they come to your booth and meet you there and learn more about coro and all the good stuff you're doing for small medium enterprise yes so of course we're very excited to be at black hat uh, this is our second year uh, at Black Hat, and uh, we're going to be there in full force with our channel team, with our direct team, um, and uh, we have a big uh, booth, and we'd love to see everybody. It's uh, booth uh, 4734. Uh, so, um, yeah, and uh, we're very much looking forward to it. Uh, I think uh, Black Hat is one of these places where you really get to meet uh, the doers, the hard workers of cybersecurity, unlike some of the other conferences that are a lot more executive and marketing oriented. I think that uh, at Black Hat, it's a lot more uh, the people that are carrying the weight on their shoulders. And we love meeting these people because that's who we cater to. Yeah, the, the practitioners are in full force and the architects and the, uh, all the doers and the researchers all come together yeah. at this event. This is really cool. And a lot of service that. providers, MSPs, yeah. MSSPs, especially a lot of those that cater to the more middle market, small businesses, which is our bread and butter. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's a good fit for us to be there. Uh, really good conversations uh, last year. Um, and I think that uh, this year is gonna be no different. I'm also looking very much forward to my talk. I'm uh, giving a talk on the 7th at uh, 3.45 p.m. And the title of the talk is uh, a little bit tongue-in-cheek. It's uh, Platformization, uh, Consolidation, and Other Buzzwords Debunked. That's really cool. <laughs> Everybody's talking about platform now. I so. know. Well, all right. So why, why don't we just do that? Uh, first of all, I'm excited to see your booth in their entirety because we yes. i guess we we saw yes. in london when we met you there great team we met the old team at coral with fantastic Love people and we we had a chat right inside the booth and you told me that was a smaller version i was like looking up and i'm like okay i can't wait to see the big one but yeah. <laughs> apart from that uh yeah give us a tease on uh what, what these buzzwords that you're going to debunk are and uh what, what is this talk yeah so uh, every year, there is a new 
buzzword that sort of conquers. So um, three years ago, it was uh, zero trust. Everybody was doing zero trust. <laughs> Uh, two years ago, it was all about uh, simplicity. Everybody was simple. Uh, last year, this year, and last year, it was all about AI. AI this, AI that, Gen AI, everything AI. And now the big buzzword is platform. Everybody's a platform. CrowdStrike is a platform. Palo Alto is a platform. Everybody's a platform. Uh, so in my talk, I'm actually going to uh, help the people that are going to uh, hear me out in, first of all, understanding what is and isn't a platform and how should they look at. Uh, I'm actually giving people a worksheet that they can use, just take a picture of and use with, with some formulas on how should they assess what is the right platform for them, what is a platform at all, because some vendors out there talk about a platform, but they're far from being a platform. They're a uh, combination of uh, multiple products uh, that are sold under one invoice. That's what I call an invoice platform uh, as opposed to a real <laughs> cybersecurity platform. Uh, and there are many, many names you can uh, you can think of, I'm sure. But uh, my favorite, uh, uh, for example, when uh, Kurtz talks about CrowdStrike being a platform, but their email is actually Proofpoint, I rest my case. You know, so uh, so to me, you know, I'd like to uh, sort of create a framework in people's minds of what is and isn't a pr platform. I'm going to describe the three types of platforms that are out there um, and which also ties directly into consolidation. And also I'm going to talk about how do you uh, evaluate which kind of platform is right for you. Uh, and within that, how do you evaluate the platforms that are out there? Uh, as far as they're fit for your specific needs. Um, so, uh, and there's a nice, uh, we, we've done a lot of work internally at Coro in trying to understand how people should think about these things. And I codified it in a way that anybody can now take it and operationalize it in their own business, in their own company. So let me, let me see if I got it right. Uh, my vision is uh, Frankenstein, right? And you put pieces together and you know, we know what happened. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Shelley, tell us what happened. Uh, the, what you're saying here is that it should be a platform by design, kind of like security, meaning you, you, you build it from the ground up in a modular yeah. way as you guys do. And, and that's why when you say you just invoice as a platform means that you're just taking a piece, you're Frankenstein that I'm doing a verb with Frankenstein here. And that's not going to be what you want. Yeah, or maybe it is. Maybe all you need is an invoice platform because okay. uh, that's something that takes away a lot of your procurement headaches and you can create a better, you can negotiate better with a vendor because you uh, buy a lot of things from one vendor. So maybe it is what you need. I'm not, I'm not advocating against it. Okay. I'm saying that that's one type of platform, which is more uh, around... Uh, vendor consolidation rather than technology, which is what we offer, which is a platform that was built from the ground up as a platform that is modular, we, in which all the modules talk to each other seamlessly, where you have a, one um, dashboard, one pane of glass that you need to work with, uh, where you have one uh, endpoint agent that you need to deploy, just one uh, that... Um, that uh, you, you, that self manages and you don't need to do any maintenance on, uh, and and that all of these modules talk to each other because it's an actual platform. You know, some of these invoice platforms, these tools don't talk to each other and rely on humans to do the triage in many ways. And our approach to security is very different. Our pro approach is, uh, you know, why not have these tools talk to each other? and make smart decisions and take the human uh, out of the mundane work and let the people focus on the big picture and not on chasing events and trying to understand triangulation between what your email security is saying and what your access security is saying and what your cloud security is saying. And I don't want, uh, I don't want to steal any thunder from the session. So don't don't give anything away here that uh, you, you want people to come and, and enjoy live in on uh, on hand in person. But you mentioned platform archetypes. 
I don't yes. know, what can you share about that? Because that that seems really cool. Mark and I like like to look at things from an arch archetypical perspective as well. So what what's that all about? Um, te tease us a bit on that. So so I look at them from uh, a consolidation of vendors um, in which um, the platform is actually made up of multiple vendors that are sold by one organization. Uh, to me, CrowdStrike is a great example of that, where uh, some of the tools that they offer are actually third party uh, that are not really integrated, but still you're buying from a vendor. Uh, you have one chokehold uh, that you need uh, to have. You have one invoice, you can negotiate better. So that's one type. The second type is more of a Cisco Palo Alto situation where it's all their product, whether by acquisition or development, but it's their standing behind that product. Um, and there's pluses and minuses to that as well. And then the third is uh, what we are, which is a platform that was grown from the ground up, no acquisition, no uh, uh, really fully integrated. And then there is uh, something that is uh, a little different, which is more of a service platform where you're buying uh, a stack from a service vendor that has done that is basically masking all of the complexity and taking it upon themselves very costly because you know somebody has to pay for all of that uh, uh, but uh, as a as a company who needs a platform this also could be an option so i'm, I'm trying to be as unbiased as i can be uh, in my talk in presenting the pluses and minuses of each one of those archetypes and then helping the audience understand how to decide which one of those is the right fit for their organization. I, I'm by no means, uh, I'm saying that we are the right fit for everybody. Uh, so so I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this as here's, here's what you need to think about when you're looking at these four archetypes. And then within the four archetypes, I've created this... Uh, uh, call it worksheet, spreadsheet, whatever you want, in which each area that you need to look at, you give it a weight and you give it a score. And then at the end, when you're comparing platforms within a space that you're interested in, whether it's an invoice or uh, a vendor, or uh, and then within those, you can see which one is the best fit for your needs based on what is important to you as an organization or as a team that is... Uh, managing security on behalf of the organization. So, so it's, it's really smart. It's, it's a, uh, I'm, I'm saying so myself because I'm very unbiased, of course. Uh, but but I've, I've invested a lot of work with my team in building this uh, uh, sort of like um, decision architecture that would be, I think, very helpful for an organization to look at how to consolidate um, in a way that is the right fit for them. Yeah. No, I, and, I love the real, real quickly, Mark. I just yeah, want to make no, this no. comment because yeah, no so an unbiased view, those those view of those different types, to your point, there are certain things work for different organizations. But for you, and can you correct me if I'm wrong here, but as your vision to platform by design achieve certain objectives with the solution that you build for a specific audience that has those requirements. Does that help you really focus in and make, I'll say better decisions, at least more informed decisions on how and where to invest to stay true to that, that particular audience? So we look at uh, every decision we make as a company, uh, not just from a product development side, but also from a go to market side, we look at it through the lens of our audience. And our, our end audience is the mid-market and small businesses, but our real audience is the service providers who are serving them. So the MSPs, the MSSPs uh, that are uh, helping these organizations. So we look at this from both perspectives and every decision we make as a company is uh, is looking at uh, at the decision through the lens of how is this going to make these people's lives easier and how are we going to make their businesses more secure? Um, and, and our decisions as far as product, as far as features, 
uh, are always looking at it from that lens. So uh, I always say, if, if you uh, look at uh, a feature li- uh, checklist, then, um, you know, our thinking is we actually removed features because our thinking was we need to make it simpler and easier for my audience to be able to manage it because they don't have the time or the dedicated staff to deal with a bunch of uh, knobs and and bells and whistles. They need security. They need security they can trust. They need security that looks at things on their behalf and removes workload, not adds workload. Whether they're the end customer or the service provider who's serving them. Because if you're a service provider, if you're an MSP, and you ha- you want to provide your mid-market or small businesses uh, with really strong cybersecurity, today it's not economically possible because there is no way for you to offer them that in a way that you make a reasonable profit and they can afford, right? And we've taken that away. We've taken that away out of the equation because we've built it in a way that you don't need to build a huge team, which is the highest cost from an MSP's perspective. Uh, you don't need to build a huge team to manage us. The system practically self-manages on the one hand side. And the system itself is very reasonably priced. So you can offer it to your customers in a way that they can afford it, provide them the full security, uh, workspace security um, gamut of endpoint and and network and cloud and email and user and data governance all in one platform using one engine, using one endpoint agent, using one uh, pane of glass. So from your perspective as a service provider, it's so much easier and so much more economical and so much more profitable to offer that kind of environment to that small business, to that mid-market customer in any vertical. Yeah, I think I think that's a plus because then as a service provider, you can offer your service on top of that. So it, it's not absolutely it, it's very it's very flexible, not only well, if you say easy it, and, and it's also need to be flexible so you can adapt. And I know it's a modular system, but th- this is what I want to go back a little bit is into what is right for you and often what is right for you today may not be right for you tomorrow. So that may be a moment where you say, hmm, you know what? I didn't even know I could go this direction, but I feel like I'm stuck with with the stuck that I have. I know, Sean, you love the stuck, so I'm going to use it (laughs) twice. And how I would like to know, maybe our our audience right now would like to know how easy it is to, to jump on board with with coral yeah yeah um so a couple of comments about that uh first of all you're absolutely right uh many times uh once you're fully invested in a very expensive uh complex security platform it's very hard to extract yourself from it so with us first of all onboarding onto our platform i'm not exaggerating is minutes not hours not months not days minutes Uh, our customer success team can onboard a customer during a 20-minute call and and take them from no security to full workspace security of endpoint, user, cloud, email, network, everything in about 20 minutes Uh, with all of the configuration, all of the configuration done in, in those 20 minutes. That's one thing. But more importantly, the way the platform was designed was that you can add and remove modules on demand. No, you don't need to be a tech a tech genius to do that. You just turn them on, turn them off, they work. So you can scale up if your needs change, but you can also scale down if your needs change, uh, both from a user perspective, user, uh, user-based perspective, or uh, from a uh, functionality perspective. Um, and, and once you turn something on, It just works. There is no integration work. There is no uh, configuration work. None of that. You just turn it on and it just works. Um, I'll give you two examples that are uh, very key. One of the key things that we're hearing more and more from our customers and our partners is all about data governance because the government 
is now becoming a lot more aggressive in putting regulations around cybersecurity and data governance that historically have only been applied to the very large enterprises. And now they apply to anybody. So an example of that is the safeguard rules that the FTC pulled, uh, put out uh, uh, last year. Uh, so with us, you basically say, I want data governance. You turn on the module. You say what kind of data governance you want. And it, it applies to your email, to your cloud storage, uh, to your, uh, to your uh, endpoint device, to everything. You don't need to start dealing with, you just tell us what you want to govern, where you want it governed, and that's it. It just happens, magic. Um, very, very different than other platforms that require you to do an enormous amount of configuration work, definition of uh, uh, dictionaries, uh, uh, writing scripts, and all. none of that. You just tell me what kind of data you need governed, uh, and you trust us that we've done all the work behind the scene on your behalf as far as identifying it, complying with different rules in different geographies, complying with different rules in different verticals. You don't need to worry about any of that. You just click a button and you can go from no data governance to data governance in minutes. That's an example. Another example I'll give you is user base. Let's say uh, you spoke about you know, uh, changes in needs. Take a retailer, for example. A retailer has these cycles of uh, employees uh, of, of staff, because for example, towards the holiday season, they bring in lots of staff on to deal with the holiday season. And then at the end of the holiday season, that temporary staff goes away with us. No problem. Add staff. You only pay for what you use. So add the 2000 people that you're adding for the period of time during the holidays. That's great. At the end of those uh, two months, take those licenses back and pay for the 300 people that you have on an ongoing basis for the year. I don't know too many other vendors that say that. <laughs> Once you lock them you in, are. you can't get out. You, that's mm -hmm. it. You're paying for that license for the year. Yeah, that's wild. And I want to go back to, as we wrap here, just one point on the, the previous example. Um, you've done the work for the different regions, the different policies, different regulations for, for the data governance. And I'm thinking that's great as an individual company. Thank you very much. But as an MSP, holy cow, they can easily serve a much broader spectrum of organizations and not have to deal with a ton of stuff. Uh, differences Absolutely. between them as well. Absolutely, especially since a lot of their customers have multiple geographies to be to begin right. with. They might have some regional offices uh, in different places, and suddenly they need to now comply with Canadian laws. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just just you know, just across the border, uh, twenty miles, totally different rules uh, of data governance of of uh, data residency, and you know, an MSP that sits in uh, say Detroit. Uh, might also service people that are across the border in Canada. And with us, seamless, completely seamless. Nice. Nice. Well, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, keep these conversations going, Drawer, of course. I'm and, looking forward uh, to seeing you guys in Vegas. Come to see my uh, talk. I know. It's uh, August On the 7th. 7, 335. 335, yep. And uh, Business Hall Theater D., uh, platformization, con consolidation, and other buzzwords debunked. And of course, we're going to put a link to where you can find that information and, and uh, connect with the team at Coro. Um, the energy from your team, Drorik, I can only, uh, it's stuck in my mind the energy that your team had when we saw them in London. Uh, it's amazing. Our team is great. So, I'm so proud of them. So go see the team uh, as a place to book a meeting here as well if you want uh, a deeper dive into any of this stuff. So uh, drawer, thanks a million for, for this chat. We look Thank forward to seeing you. Thank you for having me again, guys. I really appreciate it. Well, well, and thanks we'll everybody. See you soon. For... I'll have another, another conversation and for everybody else, Sean, I'm going to steal it from you. All right, go for it. Subscribe. If you are in Vegas, uh, we can see you there, but a lot of people uh, are not going to make it there and we will be your eyes and, uh, ears and, uh, we'll let you know what's going on there with other great conversation like this. And uh, the conference and coverage goes before, during, and after. So stay tuned. 
And uh, Dror, we'll see you soon. See you soon, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come back for more brand stories on ITSP Magazine. If you want to share your company's brand story, go to ITSPMagazine.com and explore our advertising options to learn more. Remember to share this podcast with your friends, family, and colleagues, and stay tuned for more brand stories as we continue our journey toward redefining cybersecurity, technology, and society.